Oh, I didn't see you there. As long as you're here, we might as well talk about the new Warcraft 3 patch announced for the PTR. So, if you don't mind my uh, seamless transition here, let's get right to it. <clears throat> All right. So, this was just announced. I'm sure you've already seen about 50 other people talk about it. Uh, so, let me be the 51st. Uh, feel free to ignore me if you've already heard people talk to death about this patch. But I thought I'd throw my voice into the, to the mix here. Uh, a quick video. Not going to delve too much into it because uh, there, there aren't huge changes, but still enough to talk about for sure. Uh, so we'll skip all this stuff in the beginning, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter. You probably all read it yourselves anyway. But they have some nice reasoning here, and I will give them that, that I really enjoy the fact that they have these developers' notes and explanations throughout, kind of sharing their thoughts behind the changes. Because, I mean, if you remember back in the day, uh, whenever they'd release a patch, it would just be changes, and there wouldn't really be any reasoning behind it. And even uh, not too long ago, this was still the case. Uh, but a lot of people requested this, and I'm glad they keep up with the developer's notes. So let's go right into the balance here. The Mountain King Thunderclap cooldown increased from 6 seconds to 7 seconds across all levels. That's good. It's a good change. Thunderclap is pretty broken. Uh, it's a really small change, though, uh, which is kind of the theme of this patch, which I will commend them for, because this is kind of the opposite of the early 1.30 patches where they made these huge sweeping changes that just kind of ruined the game almost and just threw everything into chaos. So they're being a lot more careful now. I appreciate that. This is the way to go forward, especially for such an established old game like Warcraft. Uh, don't want to jump the gun for sure. But I, I predict this will not be the, the last change to Thunderclap. It's still pretty busted, I would say. Uh, they say it's been slightly overperforming. Uh, yeah, that's one way to put it. <clears throat> Rathman attack delay increased from 1.35 to 1.4. Great change, if only for the human versus night elf matchup, which is what they specifically mention here in the text. But a good change in general. Riflemen are pretty busted units. Uh, just by far the best unit in the game, almost, I would say. And removing some of their attack, I think, is justified or justifiable. Uh, good change. Might even be a bit too small. But again, we have to consider all the matchups. And for example, against Undead, if we if we uh, nerf the Rifleman too much, it probably won't be viable to use in that matchup, and then we'll probably see more tanks and stuff. So uh, we've got to be a bit careful with the Rifleman. It's a very well-rounded and often used unit in, in a lot of matchups. So I think it's a good start. So we get some interesting hero changes here, mainly to the Ultimates. Resurrection from 200 to 150, I think that's good, that's great. 200 was always a bit expensive. Same thing for Big Bad Voodoo, but reducing the mana cost of Big Bad, Big Bad Voodoo isn't really going to address the issue. And the issue is that the spell is just bad. Like I don't think you're going to pick it, unless you're already like winning the game and you just level up to level 6. That's when you pick it and use it just for the flashy effect, but it's it's not a good spell. It's not worth 150 mana. Certainly not worth 200 mana. So I think it needs to be changed. Uh, further down here, they, they, they express that the, they don't enjoy the uh, short invulnerability added to the old tranquility, which I think is a shame, because I think a lot of these ultimates would be fine if they just had a, a bit of an invulnerability phase. Because by the time you have a level 6 Shadow Hunter, your opponent's going to have some way to deal with this. But yeah, just changing the mana, not not too impressive. I really like the Earthquake change, though. Uh, make it faster and not affect your own units or your allies' units. Uh, we might actually see this used if, if uh, we, we get level 6 Farseers. Like in a fight, in a base lane kind of situation, it'll be a pretty versatile ultimate. Uh, I think that's a great change. Yeah, I like to say in the text here, there's some combat usage as well. So it's not just going to be a pure base lame uh, thing. Uh, great change. This is what we kind of need to see with the uh, Shadowhunter and other heroes to actually alter the ultimate, not just the mana cost. Uh, Tarn Chieftain, here's another, uh, the, the big elephant in the room here. War Stomp cooldown increased per level from 6 to 7. Again, just like Thunderclap, not enough, I don't think. It's a good start. They're being careful. That's that's commendable, but uh, this is by far the most broken spell in the game. Like it's better than most ultimates, I'd say almost. So just 
increasing the cooldown is not going to cut it. Uh, but then again, we have to be careful because a lot of orcs power seems to stem from the Tarn Chieftain. So if they don't have that massive stomp, they don't really have too much, especially in like the human versus orc matchup. Uh, Witch Doctor stasis trap activation delay decreased from 10 to 9 seconds. Detection radius reduced from 250 to 275. Activation time reduced from 1.0 to 0 0.5. It's fine, I guess. Kind of, kind of a, a change from left field, you know. I didn't really expect a change to the space stasis trap. I don't know exactly why. Uh, I mean, yeah, they they justified somehow. The wish doctors are still fairly rare. That's true. Tune up stasis trap. To do that, we looked into how it could trap more units. A small detonation ring combined with a shorter delay means that units will have less time to move through the area of effect before getting trapped. Will have less time to attack the totem when it revealed itself. All right. Um, I guess it's fair enough that if you're go if you want to see which doctors are used more often, the one thing you're going to buff is probably going to be the stasis trap. Like buffing sentry wards would be crazy because they're already really strong, and nobody wants to see a buff to heal wards. I don't think. Uh, so that that's a good choice if they want to bring out the the troll witch doctors. Uh, Keeper of the Grove here, the first night of change. Uh, Entangle Roots can cast, uh, cast range on level 3 increased from 600 to 800. Uh, I think they give a good justification for it here. But I'm not sure why level 3 is the, the key level here. I would probably want to see something like add 100 range to level 2 and then another 100 range to level 3. Because level 3 roots is almost never ever relevant in the game. But I guess it's a nice little perk that uh, you can actually get some range out of it. Uh, especially, like they say, in team scenarios. Because a lot of times you just can't root stuff. They're just too far away. And the Keeper of the Grove has the annoying habit of having a very long cast animation. So even though you're in range when you cast roots, by the time he's done or halfway done with his silly animation, the unit that you cast it on has moved too far away and the Keeper of the Grove cancels his entangling roots. So that, that's a very frustrating mechanic in the game. Uh, tranquility and vulnerability removed. I think this is the shame. Uh, but duration reduced. So it kind of goes back to, I would say, a more passive ultimate where you can use it before a fight or after a fight. But in a fight, it's going to be kind of garbage again. Um, so they say, after testing it, we're moving away from this, the whole invulnerability thing, as we feel it dampens the personality of channeled abilities. Ideally, a channeled ability is very powerful with the drawback of being interruptible. Fair enough. I mean, it still is interruptible if you just give it a small vulnerability. The, the, the benefit of the invulnerability is that you're guaranteed to get something out of it, which is what these ultimates really do need. Imagine if Starfall had a couple of seconds of invulnerability. It would make it actually useful and not just a fringe ultimate that you'd only pick if your opponent has literally no stun. Uh, tranquility is kind of one of the exceptions to to this uh, to the channeling ultimates being garbage, though. Since you can use it out of a fight, you can use it after a fight to heal up efficiently, and it heals mechanical units. Like it's a pretty good ultimate, I would say. But uh, you know, if if we're talking about earthquake or big bag voodoo or volcano, all those spells uh, pr pretty garbage uh, if you don't have an an vulnerability, I would say. Due to the claw, base damage and bear form increased. We've been talking about this. Uh, it's almost a meme, I guess. And I think this is fine. Again, they justify this, kind of coupling this with the rifleman slight nerf and then a slight buff to bears. I think that's fine. It's fair. Like they say, bears do need more power. And they need more oomph in their attack, especially since they're used so often and they're they're kind of the meat and potatoes of Night Elf, or at least ideally they, they should be. Uh, so I think a small buff to bears getting them slightly back to, to normal uh, is fine. Through the Talon, gold cost reduced. Uh, so now they're back to the old Talons. So the devs say here that the previously due to the Talon had their gold cost increased due to balance concerns with them in the Orc vs. Night Elf matchup, which was fair. But they also made the change at the same time that they added Tier 2 Fortified. So it didn't make any sense at all. Talons are still complete garbage against Orc, and they're going to be complete garbage because 
as long as Orc has tier 2 fortified, they never ever ever lose to this if they want to play the lame game. A lot of Orcs, I guess, don't want to and they'll play kind of straight up and you can win. But uh, if you've ever seen like Lin or some of the top Orcs play against Talons, they don't give a, you know, they don't, they, they'll just uh, go pure lame because that's what works, that's what beats it. They'll just build a bunch of towers and hit and run and slowly they'll, they'll turn the game around. So. You can change the cost of Drew to the Talon as much as you want, but the, the main issue is always going to be the Tier 2 Fortified, which has to be removed, I think. All right, Undead Crypt Lord. Uh, this is uh, the one thing that really got me excited here. This is what makes this an A-plus patch for me, uh, the Crypt Lord change here, because, first of all, Impale was always kind of garbage in that you could actually kind of hurt yourself by... Like, there were situations where if you throw a coil and impale at the same time, the impale kind of makes them invulnerable in the air, and then the coil doesn't do anything, stuff like that. So that's removed. I think that's great. And it also is a buff to the stun duration, because the invulnerability, I think, was calculated in the stun duration of the spell, which made it kind of garbage. Uh, so this is good. And here's the big change here, the carrying beetles. So they increased the mana cost, but now you get two beetles, and you can have a max of six. Uh... Initially, I think this is kind of broken. Uh, it might not be, but it feels like uh, you can fast expand way too easily, or alternatively, you can like rush really efficiently. Like if 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 you're undead against human, for example, against uh, a fast expansion, I imagine you can show up with like six beetles and six skeletons in like two minutes into the game, and you can just kill every single peasant that's trying to build an expansion. That's what I think, though, but I might be wrong. So, if this does stick, I'm definitely interested in trying this out. Just like I think Crypt Lord expansion is going to be the new thing in pretty much every matchup. I, I don't see uh, I don't see a single matchup where this wouldn't be kind of busted. But but uh, yeah, this is this is the big one for me. I'll, I'll just go through this real quick because I think this is the the main one I want to talk about. So the develop, developers notes here. The being whose might cannot be matched is getting a tune-up in this patch. Previously, the impale ability was hard-coded to be interruptible and makes units and make units hit by it invulnerable. Yeah, that's what I said. A while airborne. So that's good. Uh, speaking of bug, bugs, our buff to carrying beetles should greatly encourage some new experimentation. That's a nice way of putting it. With this rather rarely picked ability, and I think that's fair because if you look at like all the summons in the game. I think beetles were never that bad, but they just didn't have a place. But now I think they definitely will. And now the Crypt Lord can bring out bring about a swarm of summons much earlier and with less mana invested to either scout opponents or make early game pushes. And I'd, I'd add a second or a third point here, which would be fast expansion. That's the main one. But also, I mean, those pushes, I think Crypt Lord Tower Rushes could be a thing against Orc. A ghoul all-ins with beetles. Like if you dodge Wisps against Night Elf. I think it could be nice. Uh, but I think they're a bit cautious here by saying we will be monitoring if this proves to be too much. But we feel these changes overall give the ability a much stronger personality. So I, I, I think this is a great note to end on. They're kind of aware that this might be a bit silly. But if it works, it'd be, it'd be really cool to see Undead have maybe uh, something other to do than Death Knight. And Dreadlord, because Dreadlord is like, Dreadlord's kind of boring. Sleep kind of is not fun to play against. Uh, it's not really that fun to play, I would say, but the mighty Crypt Lord here. Uh, I think the Beatles and all that could be a lot of fun. So I hope, if it does prove to be too powerful, I hope they rather decrease the stats of the unit rather than remove the double summon. Because I, I like the idea a lot. It makes it feel like you're, you're kind of massing Beatles with your Crypt Lord. Like, uh, I agree with the sentiment of a much stronger personality for this spell. Death Knight, enemy dead cost reduced. <laughs> we can just skip this. Enemy dead is still complete garbage. Uh, I think basically this is, it's it's going from 175 self mana burn to 125 self mana burn. It's just a garbage spell. Doesn't matter. Like it could, it could cost zero mana and it's still not going to be picked. It's still going to be worse than picking or, or a level three, for example. Skeleton warrior base hit point decreased. So this is supposed to help against the human versus undead matchup, which is fair. And 
I suspect this will also make it possible to creep with skeletons again, that they won't be purged because they're, they're under the threshold of being purged by being at 180. So I think that's good. Makes them a bit less uh, powerful against uh, killing peasants, but more versatile in creeping. Ritual Dagger, total hit points regenerated per charge, increased from 125 to 175. It's good. Ritual Dagger is pretty pretty bad. Uh, I think it's still pretty bad, but it's slightly, slightly better. That's nice. Would restore 350 hit points total over two charges. Eh, well, it might be nice. Especially if you combine it with these uh, endless amounts of beetles you're going to have. Uh, let's see here. So we'll go on to the neutral heroes here. Beastmaster, Summon Bear from 125 to 100. Great change. Kind of in line with the, the Force of Nature being buffed that way too. Uh, like they say in the notes here, it's going to make it so you can actually kind of go Bear Quill if you want to more often. Uh, good change. But again, one thing that I kind of find odd here is like they'll say at the highest level of play, the Beastmaster has fallen off in usage over time, and this is why they want to buff the bear. But like, who decides which heroes should be used more often? Because the Fire Lord certainly isn't being used, and he's not getting a buff beyond his Volcano, and the Volcano is not the issue with Fire Lord. So and just, it's kind of weird to me how somebody just decided that, oh, we, we should see more Beastmaster first, or Beastmaster usage. Whereas nobody's saying, oh, we should see more Fire Lord usage. Uh, but whatever, I think it's a fine change. Uh, Pit Lord, <clears throat> unit affected by Doom, afflicted by Doom, I should say, has its movement speed slowed by 50%. Uh, okay. Added two new data, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Becoming something more than just a super niche pick for styling on opponent. <laughs> yeah. With looking over the ultimate abilities, we want to give this one a little more of a boost to reduce the ability of an opponent to run away an afflicted unit. Is this an issue? Has anyone really... Like, the thing about Doom is it's not it's not really that powerful. The actual summon itself is kind of underwhelming if you've ever actually had it in a game. Uh, it's nice to be able to kill, like, a knight or something and get it, but the actual Doom Guard is kind of bad. So, I don't see this change kind of affecting anything. It's, it's a fine ultimate, and it's going to be a bit better now, I guess. Uh, Fire Lord, Volcano Eruption Waves decreased from 8 to 5. Wave Interval reduced from 5 seconds to 3 seconds. Increased Building Damage Factor from 2 to 3. No longer affects friendly units or structures. Uh, fine change, but again, as long as it's a pure channeling spell with no vulnerability, I think it's going to be bad. And how often are we going to see this spell anyway? I, I don't think I've ever seen Volcano like in the past 10 years, I haven't seen it once. Uh, so yeah, like I said, the issue with Fire Lord, if you want to see Fire Lord more, used more often, then you have to think uh, think beyond Volcano. You have to look at his other spells, I think. Uh, Nagasi Witch Tornado, uh, removing the random behavior and decreasing the mana, I think that's fine as well. Uh, is it going to be useful? Eh. I think a lot of time you, you kind of want those frost heroes and you want those uh, forked lightning spams as much as you can. So using even 125 mana, uh, I don't know. Kind of a meh change. I don't really really care that much about it. Uh, Blue Dragon, well, Blue Drake and Blue Dragon added a passive icon. So this is, uh, since they're going to add the Blue Dragons as a drop, as a summon instead of the red, or Drake, I should say. They're kind of making it obvious or clear that they have a frost attack, which is fine. A lot of item changes here. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these. It'll take too much time, I think. But I will say that uh, I think these are great. Nerfing greater mana is amazing. It's a bit too strong. I think we all know that. And nerf slash buffing the mana potion. I think is good too because it'll make it less of an investment like you can actually use them more frequently and it's not this huge like getting a mana potion is kind of huge right now i'd say but um, getting one for your tc you'd have a couple extra stomps for 125 gold you know i think that's good it's a nice change uh, might make like strength heroes maybe a bit too good when like if you don't have to 
consider their mana pool as uh, as much as you would otherwise. But, uh, but I mean, 150 gold instead of 200 is is nice, I think. So again, uh, red drake is removed, blue drake is added. I think that's good. Since there is a frost attack, it'll be more strategically used, I guess. Uh, same thing with the, the furball here, removing the garbage summon with an actual good summon. Again, the one charge is kind of important since there's a cooldown on summoning them. So having three charges of a bad furball is terrible because you can't actually use them all at once. But yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to go through all these, but I really like the idea of changing up the items and trying some new things. Even this Scepter of Mastery, which might feel kind of weird, but I like it. I think uh, this might be fun to see and like someone can steal a destroyer and they'll have a destroyer or something. I don't know. It'll be cool. Uh, let's see here. So the boat change, I think <laughs> if we if you saw any of the Todd Jersey 2 tournament, uh, you kind of saw how uh, how BS these boats are. So that's nice. If, if we ever do see boats in, in normal maps, it's a good thing to preemptively make them uh, less broken. So thumbs up for that. Uh, the mercenary camp update, same thing for the items. Not going to go through all these, but I love this as well. Why not? You know, let's switch things up. Let's try some new stuff. Make it more interesting. Uh, some of it might, might prove to be broken, but looking over the list here, I didn't see anything that stuck out too much. Uh, I like having, especially like different ranged units, like ones with auras, like Burning Archer. There used to be a map, uh, I think on Netties, where you could get a Burning Archer and a Frost Archer from a creep spot. Like uh, it'd be a a uh, drop on the ground that would summon them, and it made for some interesting games. So I, I like the any units that have some kind of not just stats, you know, not just damage and stats, but having some kind of ability is nice. Uh, so I'm not gonna go skip all this. The map pool rotation. Uh, I, I don't have too much trust in the Blizzard having gonna in making a good ladder with like good maps but removing dollar on adding bright water oasis it's kind of like okay i guess so hopefully when or if they add a ladder they will uh, consult the community a bit more when it comes to, to adding and removing maps uh removing phantom grove is kind of a weird choice because i feel like they they changed it to remove the, the mercenary abuse but then there's already a, a map uh, where you can still do that, the updated version of, I forget what it's called, the snow map, where there's a fountain of health in the middle. Uh, you can uh, abuse ensnare creeps there, or ensnare mercenaries. A uh, Circle of Fallen Heroes, my experience is, is pretty good, that's a nice map. Uh, don't really have any experience in the 3 3 and 4 4 to comment on those, or Free For All. Uh, but Murgle Oasis, I remember, is a garbage map, so that's nice that there's gone. They added critters to Terran Stand. I didn't know that was an issue, but uh, I guess undead players know. Uh, the, the Twisted Meadows null camp, I think, is good as well, because if you're a human, for example, on Twisted Meadows, you, you pretty much have one option, which is to creep something really big at the cost of a lot of um, peasants or lumber mining time. So this will actually make it possible to maybe do a fast tech with, with a green camp route, going from like one green camp to another, stuff like that. I like it. Uh... Echo Isles, I guess, fixing some bugs or some weird situations. And yeah, my cat is going crazy in the background. I'm not sure if you can hear that. Uh, sanctuary, uh, don't really care too much. Toilet runes, blah, blah, blah. All right, so I guess that's it. Like I said, I, I think this is a very promising patch. There seems to be a lot of thought put into it. They have nice notes on everything. It's not too much all at once like they did before with 1.30. Uh, with the keeper and all that so i'm really looking forward to hopefully this making it through ptr again i don't like playing the ptr because it's always laggy and there's no ladder it's not very competitive so it's not really a good way to test the maps or the changes so i hope all this makes it through especially the the, the beetles for the crypt lord i think that'll be a lot of fun you'll definitely see me play undead if that goes through uh so yeah Hope you guys enjoyed uh, my thoughts here, and uh, don't forget to subscribe for daily videos every single day, I promise.